isn't so, ladies and gentlemen. Atomic energy is the greatest force for good or for evil that man has ever developed. And it's up to us to see that it will contribute to world progress through peace instead of world chaos through conflict. What a field day the atomic bomb will provide for warmongers, especially when men like Sir Eric Hazarius have any influence. Yes, Stanton defends peace and decency while Hazarius advocates war to gain power. Speaking of Hazarius, I'll feel a lot easier when Rod reports about him from Pendrang. Jeffrey London, and only Jeffrey London, even when we're alone, Kurtz. Sorry, Mr. London. Greb just relayed Marlowe's report by walkie-talkie. The pool of light is to be destroyed as you ordered. Good. The pool is a shrine. The tribesmen will be up in arms. And we'll blame Stanton and Tal Shan if those two escape the blast. They're going to blow up the pool. It will cause great trouble in Pendrang if they do. The pool of light is sacred. We may be able to reach them from the water. I guess I won't be thirsty for a long time, Rod. The climate like this, that's not bad, Tal. Perhaps the pool of light was blown up so that somebody could examine its bottom. But I'm inclined to believe it was done for our benefit. By Geoffrey London. This is proof that he is Sir Eric, even if he doesn't look like him. Come on. Where are the others? Well, when the pool let go, it sank the boat, so I told him to beat it. Get that thing going. I want to report to Greb. Marlow reporting. The pool of light has been blown up. And Stanton and Tal Shan with it? They spotted us before we got things set. But I'm pretty sure the flood got them. If it didn't, things are fixed for them in Zalabar. Any reaction from the tribesmen yet? You better get out of the jungle fast. OK, we're leaving right now. Stanton and Tal Shan. Speedboat. He'll never talk again. But maybe this will, though. How about it, Marlow? So we report to Greb at Expedition Headquarters and get back to Mr. Lennon in Zalabar. London. Well, we don't know the tribesmen will tell Greb anyway. Everything's 
going to be all right. Settle down. Well, that's that. I'm certainly glad you can understand the dialect of the Pendrang tribes, Dr. Grimm. They aren't blaming us, I hope, for the destruction of the Pool of Light. On the contrary, they have complete faith in you. That's why they want you to investigate what's happened at once. I'd like to have a look at the Pool of Light now that it's drained. There might be a clue there to the lost city. They don't trust us that far. But the explosion caused an accident in our cavern and... An uh, accident? Was anybody hurt? No, fortunately. Well, that's good news. Let's see what's happened. what the tribesmen wanted us to see? This is it. They say there's a cave and they're afraid to explore it. It's a temple. It evidently connects with a pool of light because it was filled with water. Then the explosion drained it when it opened this entrance. Mm -hmm. Well, let's have a look. This should prove to be one of the tablets we've been looking for. How can you be sure, Dad? It bears the hieroglyphic of the glowing goddess. How long will it take to make a translation, Doctor? Well, there's no telling. It's badly eroded. I'll have to use chemicals to bring out the hieroglyphics. Looks as if it had been underwater a long time. Thousands of years, my dear. Do you think it may at last tell us something specific about the glowing goddess? I'm sure of that, Crabbe. The symbol of the glowing goddess wouldn't be on it otherwise. This will be good news for Mr. London. It's one step in the right direction. I'll send some men back to help you bring the tablet out. Yes, do that. So tell Shan and Stanton escaped from the tribesmen and got away with our walkie-talkie. Did you follow them? We couldn't, but got back ahead of them and waited near Tell Shan's hotel. They just went in. But the walkie-talkie don't look so glum. It might be a blessing in disguise. <laughs> I never expected to hear that. <laughs> hey, Greb is reporting to Kurt something about a lead to a glowing goddess, whatever that is. It's possible that the success of my plan depends upon the glowing goddess. And if the news is what we hope, we've got what we want. Where Stanton and Tell Shan will... Wait here. I want to talk to Mr. London. I don't know anything about any glowing goddesses, but I do know it don't pay to be too curious about Jeffrey London. That's what Stanton and Tell Shan are going to find out. <laughs> Just as we thought, one of the tubes broken. WX... Y, two, six, fourteen. Have you got any? I think so. I keep an assortment to be on the safe side in an emergency. Too bad we couldn't have used this set all the way back here. For the fixed wavelength, we wouldn't have had any trouble tuning in. Yes, and what we might have heard could have provided us with a direct lead we need to prove that Jeffrey London is Sir Eric Azarius. wait until someone starts broadcasting. They know we have this set, probably, so they may change the wavelength. It won't be too difficult to find. This time, Indra's police chief wants to see both of you. You are coming here so often, Captain Hammond. Maybe I can persuade you to rent a room. I keep a sort of boarding house myself, remember? Only you get my rooms free. Just what do you mean by that? How about Indra answering that question for you? and fix up the walkie-talkie the way Mr. London wants. Yeah, we can take our time doing it, too. Good going, Dennison. You get the point. All down. That 
That's the quick way to lose system. All your eggs in one basket. Quick way to win, you mean? I figured the mathematical chances right down to the last fraction. Lose in your own way, then. Hey, black, even. I'll take over, Captain Hammond. Why you two ever came back to Zalabar is beyond me. Come on. Tell me, Mr. Stanton, that all agents of the United Peace Foundation are instructed to obey local laws. How else could a peace foundation win respect for international laws if it disregarded local laws? It is not part of our duty, for example, to blow up the pool of light. You see, Indra, they haven't been accused of anything, but they are already pretending innocence. Indra's question was an accusation. Especially since Mr. London, or should I say Sir Eric Hazarius, sent his secretary here to front for him. Say anything you like. Enough of this. Tribal laws have been broken. The safety of Dr. Elmore's expedition endangered. My authority weakened. My wealth, which depends upon local goodwill, threatened. And all of it caused by the vandalism of this gentleman. And for what purpose? To discredit Mr. London. Or planned by him to discredit us. I think that Jeffrey London and Sir Eric Azarius are two names for one man. If so, he is no philanthropist. Ask him what he really expects Dr. Elmore to find for him in the lost city of the jungle. I ask nothing. I command here. I judge you guilty. Go to the temples of Pendrag. It is forbidden territory to strangers. You go with my permission. Bow before the shrine and beg forgiveness. Publicly acknowledging guilt without trial? If you refuse, I'll turn you over to the tribesmen. Are you sure the destruction of the temples can be accomplished so that it will appear as if Pendrang's legendary glowing goddess is punishing those two? Depends upon whether they are taken to walk or talk with them. I know. That's the weakness in your plan. You can't be sure. Fairly certain. They have no way of knowing when my men report by air to Sir Eric. They will have the radio tuned in, therefore, as much as possible. Dr. Grabb and I came in with a part of the hieroglyphics that Dad has been able to translate so far. No doubt Mr. London will be delighted. Why, this discovery alone is worth the cost of the expedition. It may provide a lead to the long-lost image of the glowing goddess. Thanks for telling us, Margie. Are you going to Mr. London's now? Oh, no, shopping. I need clothes. Well, wish me luck. Bye. You know, Marjorie and her father haven't the slightest idea that Jeffrey London isn't what they're thinking. They look upon him as a benefactor. Hadn't you better say something to them, Rod? Not unless they're in danger from London's activities. As it is, they provide a cover for Sir Eric to look for whatever he wants in Pendrang. Who would think that Geoffrey London, interested in lost cities, is actually Sir Eric Hazaris, interested in war? Having convinced the world that Sir Eric was killed in an accident. Whatever Sir Eric is after must have to do with war. Perhaps it is more important to find out what it is than to prove him alive. That's exactly what we have to find out, starting by walking into a trap set for us at the temples. Do you think Indra is allied with Sir Eric? For a percentage of the profits. Then don't go near the temples. You shouldn't anyway. That's where we've got to go. If we're careful and lucky, it may force Indra to show her hand. That's another way of saying it may bring Sir Eric out into the open. If you don't mind, I'll take this radio with us. We may pick up something worth hearing. By all means, and for another reason, tune in on Tal's set. If worse comes to worse, we can communicate with you. Set the wavelength for it, Tal. Maybe Sir Eric Azarius, alias Jeffrey Lennon, isn't as smart as he thinks he is. Yeah, there you are. A man-made earthquake by radio. You've done your part, Gavron. Now all we can do is to wait for Marlowe to report. The translation of that tablet by Dr. Elmore increases the need to eliminate Stanton and Tal Shan. The way you're getting rid of those two will not only convince the tribes the glowing goddess has punished them, but permit us to search the abandoned ruins of the temples later. For another lead as to where Meteorium is hidden. Well, if the statue of the glowing goddess exists, as you suppose, and if it gets its name from the fact that it's impregnated with Meteorium, which is radioactive, 
Then all we need is that statue. All we need? Is that enough meteorium for your purpose? A fraction of an ounce is more than enough. With it, I can guarantee a device that will stop the atomic bomb. Johnson is on his way to our radio at Expedition Headquarters. He'll report the reaction of the tribesmen. Sure. How about Stenton and Tal Shan? I saw them going toward the temples, and they should be inside by now. Tal Shan has the walkie-talkie. Excellent. Ready. Tune the vibrations of the supersonic waves to that of any building, and the building will be shattered. The radio that Tal Shan carries is merely a focal point for the sound waves. Is that sound coming from the radio? It doesn't seem to be. Strangest noise I've ever heard. <laughs> 